And welcome back to the Sports Wrap right here on TV 38 WRWR. Happy New Year to you guys from our TV 38 family here. We want to make sure you guys check us out each and every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. right here on your Middle Georgia Sports Leader TV 38 WRWR. We've got a great show lined up for you guys today. We're going to do a little segment at the end of the show where we do our NFL and BCS picks. We've got playoff games and the BCS National Championship game coming up. Craig Lawson and Brandon Evans will be joining me on the couch for that segment. We'll also do a little segment where we talk about, we'll do a segment inside the Atlanta Falcons locker room. We'll talk about our Falcons getting a first round bye and how they fared this past week versus Tampa Bay. Also, had an opportunity to go to Chick-fil-A Bowl, go check out Georgia, go check out Florida State and Northern Illinois. We'll talk a little recap of our uh, bowl games from this past week. We'll touch on those as well. Also, had a little high school football that we like to talk about. GAC, GACA North versus South football game coached by Coach Brian Way and a contingency from the Middle Georgia area. That game was held last week. Also, this past Monday, New Year's Eve, you had the uh, junior high school football players. You had that East-West All-Star game. That game was held in Atlanta as well on Monday. So we'll definitely talk about that and talk about our Middle Georgia players that stood out in that game. But first, we're going to do a segment we haven't done in quite some time, our Middle Georgia Rising Stars. All right, in this Middle Georgia Rising Stars segment, I had an opportunity to travel over to Birmingham, Alabama during this holiday season and get a chance over at the Birmingham Crossplex, the indoor track and swimming facility over there. One of the most beautiful facilities I've ever seen of an indoor track. It's got the automatic bank track as well that rises up and down. Uh, some of these kids were not used to it, but we had a nice little contingency from the middle Georgia area. And obviously we had uh, representing Rutland High School, Tyler Reagan, uh, representing Rutland High School. You had the middle Georgia Magic coached by Coach Sherry Mark as well. Uh, you had Anastasia Terrell, one of the top recruits in the country. This girl owns the state record in the triple jump at 41 feet 2 inches, which she did last year at the region championships in region 3A. Now it's region 4A. Also, you had Susie Gibson uh, from Windsor Academy. She was also there getting her times down. Here's some of the experiences we had. And here's some of the interviews I got with them at the events. Guys, we are here live in Birmingham, Alabama, here at the Birmingham Crossplex, and doing some indoor meet, uh, doing an indoor meet here, the Alumni Age Indoor Meet. Also, right here joining us right now, uh, Coach Sherry Marks, head coach for the Middle Georgia Magic, and obviously Anastasia Terrell from Howard High School, and Miss, is it Mall's last night? Ways. All right, Miss Ways, and what, where you at now? What school? St. St. Peter Claver, right there in Macon, Georgia, all right here from the middle Georgia area. Here again in Birmingham, Alabama, competing. First things first, Coach Marks, you guys come out and compete all the time. Uh, you always are, uh, have, your, your girls are always usually at the top of the list. This is a wonderful experience for them to be able to do things like this, isn't it? Exactly. We felt like this would be a great experience to get started with. This is our first indoor meet, and we felt like this would be a good way to kick us out for the season. Ms. Ways, you had an opportunity, obviously, running the 400 meters, I think it was. You did very well, placed, uh, I believe it was eighth in out of uh, 37 young ladies. How, how did that feel, to obviously? And how did the bank track feel when you were running around it? Um, I felt like I was going to fall. You felt like you were going to fall? It was a little bit different feel, huh? Yes. Did it scare you when they rose it up? Because it was flat when you first got here, I'm sure. Kind of. Kind of, all right. And now, uh, Anastasia Terrell, obviously, 41-2 state record, broke the state record last year during the region championships in 3A. Now we're now at Howard High School in 4A, uh, second in the state in the 100-meter uh, hurdles, second in the triple jump last year. Uh, senior this year looks like it's going to be first place and coveted by every school in the country right now. How does it, obviously doing this and getting ready, knowing that what kind of year you're having, uh, I know state championships is, is the only thing on your mind right now. Well, uh, I just want to PR and reach all my goals. PR and reach all your goals and, and obviously compete region championships and state championships probably. Yes. 
All right, give us, give the, the listeners and fans obviously an idea of the kind of work you put in, because another young lady is, might be out there watching, and, and you might be some inspiration for her. Give that person a, a, a bit of encouragement. Well, I would say um, just work hard and just make sure you stay in school, keep your grades up, and just always believe in yourself and um, have confidence in yourself, and you can do anything by you believing in yourself. Leland Reagan here with the Sports Wrap TV 38 WRWR, here along with Coach Gerard Williams and Susie Gibson. Uh, obviously, great 400 meters for you. You had a good opportunity. Uh, you did some great things out there and had an opportunity to run here at the Birmingham Crossplex, another Middle Georgia standout, Windsor Academy, if I'm not mistaken, being represented here in Middle Georgia. How do you feel? I know you're a little tired, but how do you feel? I feel good. I ran really my best, and I'm just tired. Uh, how about the bank track? The bank track a little bit different, something something unique? Oh, yeah, it's definitely different, but it's different in a good way. So. Well, obviously, uh, Coach Wims, you uh, uh, former Auburn standout, former uh, Olympic alternate on the, on the Olympic team and the 400 meters, you've, you've, been, you've worked with a lot of these kids, including my daughter, uh, for, for, you know, this pretty much this whole entire offseason. This has got to be a good experience to see your people go out here and succeed. Um. That's short of what I, how I feel about it. Um, just seeing kids, what they come from the year before, uh, and giving them an opportunity to work in the off season, that's, that's key. It's no secret to it. Um, she's been here every day since August, your daughter. Um, they've done great jobs, and they make me come to work. Well, I tell you what, congratulations as well. I know you got a new uh, new baby, obviously, uh, Gerard Jr. Yes, and so congratulations as far as that, a little New Year's Christmas baby. That's got to be exciting. Uh, last thing for you, state championship on your mind right now, GISA? Oh, yes, definitely. All right, well, we're going to bring one to Windsor Academy. That's right. <laughs> All right, well, there it is. You heard it from the mouth of babes right here at the Birmingham Crossplex. Leland Reagan, the sports rep, will catch up a little bit later with uh, Tyler Reagan, who's uh, also competing in the 100, uh, excuse me, the 60 meter, 200, and the long jump. And guys, again, we're here live at the Birmingham Crossplex right here in Birmingham, Alabama. Guys, I tell you right now, uh, a lot of talent. We had a chance to talk to Anastasia Gitero. We had to talk to uh, Susie Gibson. And now we want to bring in Tyler Reagan from Rutland High School. Uh, you did outstanding in the long jump. And it was kind of exciting. I know you, were, uh, you, you had an opportunity to compete against uh, young ladies from states from Texas all the way, Mississippi, Florida. And it, how, how great was that for you? Uh, it, was a, it was a good opportunity for me to get out there and see what I can do not only against people from Georgia or Florida, but see what I can do for against people around the South. Well, I see, like I said, you got a medal on your neck. You came in second in the long jump, and, and you, you showed me this uh, opportunity. Obviously, uh, Coach saw you out there uh, jumping and, and, and doing things. It, this also helps you get exposure as well mm -hmm. to colleges and people like that to give you opportunity to look at you. It does. It gives a lot of exposure. Um, there have been a lot of coaches in the back in the warm-up room and around the track, a concession stand. They'll find you somewhere and they'll tell you, hey, I saw you do this and you need to do that. And they give you pointers, not really you know, trying to get you to go to their school, but just to see a, a young athlete do well. Well, I'm going to give you the accolades. Obviously, we gave Ms. Terrell earlier. Obviously, she was runner-up in the state in the, in the hurdles and the triple jump. You were uh, region champion in uh, Class 3A in 100 meters and 200 meters, runner-up in the long jump, and obviously finalist in the 100 meter, 200 meter, and the long jump in, 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 uh, in track, obviously, in 3A as well. How exciting is it for you this year as, as a, only a 16-year-old junior? Uh, you, you're excited about this year and the things you have, uh, the promise you have of maybe winning a state championship. Um, I'm very excited about it because I know that a lot of people have graduated and a lot of people have, have gone away from the competition. So it kind of takes away from the competition what I've tried to look out for, but it kind of helps me to know that I'm the, the, the one that's coming up next. So, you know, it gives me a viewpoint and a goal for me to follow. All right, guys, there it is right here from the Birmingham Crossplex, Tyler Reagan, Rutland High School. You guys will take a quick commercial break, and we'll come back right here from the Flint Energies High School Rising Stars segment. We'll be back. 26, Curtis Brooks. Hey, welcome back to the Sports Wrap right here on TV 38 WRWR. Joining me right now, my good friend Craig Lawson, 
Uh, from here at TV 38 WRWR, we're going to do a little high school football brought to you by Flint Electric. Obviously, we want to make sure you guys get an opportunity uh, to be a part and want to thank Flint Electric for being a part of what we're doing here with this high school football and here in the middle Georgia area. First and foremost, had a lot of big games over this past weekend in high school football. I know you think high school football season is over with. But, Craig, it's not. We have some uh, huge games this past week and on New Year's Eve. Give us a rundown of the GACA North versus South game. It's been going on for over 40-plus years. GACA North versus South game, coached by Warner Robins head coach, coach Brian, Brian Way. Way. Yep. David uh, Bruce from Veterans High right. School, uh, Stacy Harden at Perry. You had also... Uh, Coach George Collins from Rutland High School and Coach Shedrick Risper from the West Side Seminoles. So Middle Georgia well represented uh, and also the players that are well represented from Middle Georgia. Noah Grayer, the quarterback from West Side. Uh, Trey Payne from North Side. Mark West Thomas from Perry. DeAnthony Mack from Warner Robins. Shannon Smith from North Side, Jackson Williamson from Jones County. Those are just a few of them. Miles White from Houston County. And these are some of the, these. A lot of these young men are some of the best in the state. This GACA game has been going on. The Georgia Athletic Coaches Association game is what it is. That's what a GACA stands for. It has been going on for 46 years, I believe, and it has garnered the best players in the state of Georgia. It gives them an opportunity to showcase their talents one last time before they get an opportunity to commit and go to college. This game was a very uh, was a defensive a defensive game. It was it was threatened to end in a tie, and the North pulled away, had like a three-play uh, three drive to end it, scored, scored a touchdown, and ended up winning the game by a score of 14-7. to seven. The, the one touchdown, though, by the South, though, was set up by two middle Georgia guys. Noah Grayer set up the, with the touchdown with a 16-yard run, and then uh, Andre Williams from Jones County, uh, who had 70 yards on eight carries. He had like a two-yard touchdown run to put the only points for the South on the board. So, you know, mostly a defensive battle, but offensively for the South, uh, middle Georgia players were the ones who put the points on the board in this game. Yeah, and we had an opportunity, at least I had an opportunity during uh, the game, obviously, to talk to Coach Stacy Harden, actually prior to the game, Stacy Harden, David Bruce, and I got a, ch a chance to talk to Coach Strickland from uh, Fitzgerald High School as well. Uh, here's what they had to say. All right, Leland Reagan here with the Sports Wrap right here on TV 38 WRWR. And joining me right now, Perry High School head coach and Veterans High School head coach, David Bruce and Stacey Harden. Coach, coaches, uh, you guys have some of your, your special players out here today playing in this Middle Georgia East-West game. Uh, coach Harden, give me an idea of, of what you think this game uh, does for some of these young men in the area. Well, I think it gives some of these guys a chance to play, uh, you know, a little postseason all-star game and get some recognition. And, uh, you know, it's good for them to be able to come out and play in a game like this for all their hard work and accomplishments you know that they've had through the season and get out here and be able to showcase it in front of some different kids that you know and people that we don't normally see or play against well coach Harden you uh, obviously also you guys obviously made it uh, to the playoffs this year uh, and, and looking to obviously build on that you guys had a, a, a few veterans on your team this year uh, how is this this upcoming season how do you think the team is gonna fare well I mean we will lose a lot of guys but you know we got Hopefully we got some guys we can replace them with, but uh, you know it's going to be tough. And uh, but we got some, like I said, we got some good kids, and they're willing to work hard. So we'll see what we can do. Coach Bruce, obviously, uh, you guys had a had a season. You didn't win all the games you wanted to win this year, but you guys had some great improvement. Put a ton of points up this year. Uh, give us a little insight on your team this year. What you think? Well, you know, it was disappointing. We had, we had goals and we didn't reach our goals. And anytime you don't, that's going to be disappointing. But, you know, kids always gave a great effort. They always gave you everything they had. And I guess that's really about all you can ask. And, and uh, I feel like we're moving in the right direction and, and we're getting ready to turn that corner. And, and uh, we're going to work hard at it and see what we can do. You got some players actually here playing today as well, Coach. Uh, what do you think, again, your thoughts on what this game does for these young men? Well, I think, like Coach Harden said, it's just a nice little showcase for them. Uh, gives them a chance to get out here and be seen by some people that that ordinarily don't get a chance to see them. You know, you play with some guys that are that are uh, high caliber players like themselves, and, and uh, a little little uh, measuring stick, so to speak, about where they kind of fit in. And uh, you know, it's just a nice reward for kids that have worked hard and, and a, a nice way to culminate their high school career. Well, I'm going to joke with you a little bit. I'm a Perry Panther. I graduated from Perry High School in 1990. Uh, we just want to, uh, you know, congratulate you for letting you, use, letting you guys use our field for a couple, time, a couple times in the last few years. Well, you know, uh, 
Don't worry, one day. One day. <laughs> That's all right, guys. All right, guys, Sports Wrap right here, TV 38 WRWR. All right, all right, Leland Reagan with the Sports Wrap right here on TV 38 WRWR. Here at the Middle Georgia East West All Star Game, a lot of teams from the Middle Georgia area obviously being represented. And uh, we've got a few Peach County Trojans here, and I'm joining me right now, Coach Chad Campbell from the Peach County Trojans. Coach, uh, this is a great venue, obviously, for these young men who may not be getting a few looks at a bunch of other places to get an opportunity to shine. Yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, you know, another all-star game that you know, kids that don't participate in the north-south game get to participate in. It's, it's, it's a chance for them to showcase their abilities and, uh, you know, hopefully – uh, get their names, game, get their name out, and hopefully get them somewhere where they can play ball somewhere. Coach, you guys uh, had an outstanding season this year. Obviously, I'm sure you, uh, you knowing you, you would have wanted to culminate it with a state championship. But uh, you guys, again, you started off a little bit slow this year. Had some injuries, and then you guys just the train kind of got to rolling. Uh, and staying down in 3A, give us a little idea of obviously how that may have uh, helped or hurt you guys this year. Well, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between 3 and 4A, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, number-wise in the school, but I think it's about all the same, 3 and 4A in football. It may be a little bit different, but, uh, you know, we did have a good year. Uh, we, we, we didn't meet our expectations, our goals, but, you know, 11 and 2, uh, I'm proud of I'm, I'm proud of mostly of our seniors and what they've done in the last four years, uh, you know, winning more ball games than anybody in the history of, uh, you know, of our school in the four-year period. So, you know, uh, I'm just proud for them what they have accomplished over the last four years. Well, there it is, Coach Chad Campbell, the head coach at the Peach County Trojans. Coach, thank you for your time, and we appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Leland. All right. It here with head football coach at Fitzgerald High School, Coach Strickland. Coach, you've got five young men with an opportunity to play in this game as well today here in the East-West uh, Middle Georgia Classic. Give us an idea uh, of what this game does for these, and these young men who get an opportunity to play. Well, I, number one, it gives them just one more chance to play high school football. But uh, number two, I think the, the bigger part, maybe more so than the game, is the practices. Uh, all week long, you're going to have scouts around watching them. And it uh, just gives them one more avenue uh, to, to be seen and, and uh, to showcase their talent. Give us a little quick rundown. Give me uh, the five guys that you have playing today. Give us those names. Uh, we've got uh, Kevin Coney is playing tight end for the West. Deion Bivens is playing defensive line. Uh, Jaquil Johnson and Don Hill both playing linebacker. And uh, we've got a kid named Shaquan Smith that's playing guard. There it is, Coach Strickland from Fitzgerald High. Coach, thank you so much. All right. We're back, guys. I, I did want to mention the fact that uh, we also, obviously, as you saw, we talked to Coach Chad Campbell. He wasn't coaching in the game, but he had a couple of players there that were represented. So excited for what we have going on here in the Middle Georgia area. And Middle Georgia was represented to the fullest. So, so I'm excited about that and excited about what, the, what, what has gone on with that. Also, on New Year's Eve, you had the... Uh, the Georgia Junior Bowl up in Atlanta. That game was held at 1 p.m. on New Year's Eve. Uh, it was a very good game and had the up-and-coming seniors, outstanding juniors. They got a chance to participate the third year of this game being in existence. And you had a few players here from the local middle Georgia area. Uh, standouts, uh, Shakenneth Williams from Rutland High School, 6'2", 195 pounds, 4'3", 40-yard dash. Uh, wide receiver. Uh, he's going to be uh, hard to cover and hard to reckon with. But you had the standout from Lamar County, uh, the quarterback, Austin, obviously uh, helped lead this team to a victory. And he also played a little bit on defense and uh, prevented a, a long pass that would have kept the, uh, the, the East drive going on. But to no avail, uh, that game was uh, obviously a great standout game and opportunity uh, for him. And the, the West team and the West pulled out a, a tough victory, 10-7. to So a lot of opportunities for the uh, Middle Georgia team, and they got a chance to one, win that game. Standout, obviously, uh, Austin from Lamar County able to stand out. And that's, a, that's a, an impressive matchup because on the other side of the ball for the East team is Deshaun Watson, the junior from Gainesville who won the state championship this year. This is going to be one of the most highly recruited kids in the state of Georgia next year. 
Clemson's kind of got the inside track for them right now, but who knows what could happen in the next year. So, you know, it's an impressive victory for a West team going up against a guy like Deshaun Watson, along with all the other great players on this team. Well, again, you guys know that there's a lot of talent here in, in the state of Georgia. We've talked to you about the fact that uh, we, we had Dallas Jackson from Rivals.com come on with us and say Georgia was number one when it comes to high school recruiting in the nation. So, uh, we, and Craig, you and I will talk about that a little bit. We'll look at some of the top recruits here in the next couple of weeks with signing day looming in, in February, only about a month, little over a month away. We'll talk about that and we'll talk about where some of these young men are committing to go to school right here on the Sports Wrap TV 38 WRWR. Coming up next, we'll talk a little Chick-fil-A Bowl, Georgia, Georgia Tech winning a couple big bowl games, and how about Florida getting a mud hole stump by their former coach uh, in, uh, in Charlie Strong uh, up at Louisville. We'll talk about that and a lot more. Recap the bowl games from this past week right here on the Sports Wrap TV 38. We'll be back. Wow. Michigan at the 41. What a hit! Falls free on the ground. South Carolina deserves to have it, and they do. And welcome back to the Sports Wrap TV 38 WRWR. Again, joining me right now, Craig Lawson. I'm your host, Leland Reagan. We want you guys to get into the discussion by giving us a call, 478-345-1500, or checking us out on Twitter and following us at Sports Wrap TV 38. All right, we had, Craig, we had a few bowl games we had this past week that were meaningful for the middle Georgia area. First, I want to start with uh, Georgia Tech, USC. After USC embarrassed themselves by basically having players come out and say they didn't want to be in that game participating, uh, they also were 90 minutes late for the luncheon. Georgia Tech came out there, and we talked about this, and with Kiffin going out and all this other stuff. This was going to be a tough game for USC because the guys probably weren't going to want to play in that game. And that's exactly what happened. They did, said they didn't want to play, and they showed up and showed that they didn't want to play, and they didn't play. And you know, credit to Georgia Tech, they were they were gashing uh, USC's defense with that option, and uh, were able to play defense, which is the most impressive thing to me. Georgia Tech has st struggled defensively all year, and with guys like Robert Woods and Marquise Lee at receiver, uh, I was really impressed with the way they were able to. Uh, corral those guys in and get the win 21 to 7. Yeah, 21 to 7 was the score. And if any of you guys have seen me doing some other things and listened to me on radio, I predicted that Georgia Tech would win that game 21 17. I was just off by ah, 10 points on close. that game, but I had pretty the Georgia close. Tech score right. All right, now, Georgia, Georgia versus. Um, Georgia actually Nebraska. versus yeah. Nebraska in the uh, Capital One Bowl, guys. I don't listen. I got so much stuff going in my head right now because <laughs> I was actually at that game, uh, went went from that game to the Chick uh, that game to the Chick Fil A from the Chick Fil A Bowl, but and then to the Orange Bowl and then so to the Orange Bowl. So I've been travel. on the road. I've been traveling and trying to get to these games. Uh, outstanding games. Started out tough yeah. for Aaron Murray and the Georgia Bulldogs who trailed at the half in this game, 14-13. Aaron Murray has always had that propensity to make the really bad plays. He had two bad interceptions in this game, but he made up for it in the second half. And with the way that Nebraska came out and played, they wanted to beat Georgia. And this is kind of a letdown game for Georgia because, you know, they lost the SEC championship, could have had a shot to play in a national title. And I think they could have done better. They could have, you know, had a drop touchdown pass at the end by Tavares King, who's been good as gold this year. And he also had a great pass, in, uh, pass catch earlier in the first half. Uh, the big catch by Mike Conley. I mean, Georgia had a lot of big plays in this game. Uh, Marshall played well. Gurley played well. Overall, it was a pretty good game. Just had some difficulties. It, it started, guys, for me, really, truly, I felt like it was looking like the SEC championship game all over again because Gurley was ripping off yards and Marshall were ripping off chunks of yardage, six, eight, nine yards. Right. And then all of a sudden, we didn't see, we started, we saw Murray getting, getting the ball and throwing it. Yeah. But the thing that showed me the difference in what was going on in the demeanors of both the coaches, Bo Fellini on one sideline, Branding and raving on the sideline uh, like, a, like a lunatic. Coach Rick on the sideline as cool as a cucumber and basically understanding that his guys were going to right the ship. They did. They had a great opportunity for Georgia. Well, Florida, uh, earlier this week, Sugar Bowl, uh, they go out there and Charlie Strong decides at Louisville he's going to make an example out of uh, Florida. He does that. They beat Florida in the uh, Sugar Bowl in a BCS game. Charlie Strong signs a new contract. Exciting times, obviously, for Louisville. Now, biggest, biggest news of the week, guys. South Carolina goes out and in an unbelievable, in unbelievable fashion. It looked like they almost got cheated on a right. fourth down play, I believe it was. Yep. And all of a sudden, Jadavian Clowney had an opportunity to right the ship. 
he had a fat fatality, so to speak, yeah. as we were in the Mortal Kombat people <laughs> out there. Here's what happened. Wow. Michigan at the 41. What a hit! Balls free! On the ground! South Carolina deserves to have it, and they do! Cloudy just says, I'll take care of business right here. You give me this long to catch my breast, I'll come off the ball and rock you and get it right back to our offense. It's a power play off the left side, and Cloudy ignites himself into the Michigan backfield. How about that quickness and get off? Then he scoops it up with his left hand. He wanted to roll with it. Not many guys I've ever seen can get off the ball and rock people up like Clowney. What a play by the man, as we've said, who's touted as the best player in the country. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate. What an incredible, incredible play by Jadavion Clowney. I mean, I don't know what Michigan blockers were thinking. He had two guys whiff on him. He got off the ball so quick, read that so well. I hope that Michigan running back is okay. I, I don't think <laughs> they like had his to head carry. popped off. Yeah, right? it looked like his head popped off. I mean, that this is a kid who could play in the NFL right now, right. and unfortunately has to come back to college for another year. Fortunately for fortunately, South Carolina, yeah. unfortunately for us as college football yeah. fans too. Unfortunately for every team that has to play against him, though, and unfortunately for him, you know, because he can't make money yet. Um, but incredible play. I mean, that's the play of the year for me personally, and I, I don't want to be a prisoner of the moment here. But that is that was just so impressive by by Clowney. It was very impressive, guys. And then, and I had an opportunity as well to go and be a part of the Chick Fil A Bowl as well. And it, to me, one of the most exciting games of the week came down to the very last play of the game. Well, he, here, let me give you a little rundown and insight on how the game went. LSU versus Clemson right now. Obviously, first half of this game, 14 to 13, LSU led going into the half. We had an opportunity uh, to uh, hear what Les Miles had to say. He got his team fired up and ready to go. They came out and they have begun to put their foot on the neck of Clemson right now. Exciting times. Clemson also loses Sammy Watkins, first player of the game. Sad situation for the Clemson Tigers, but this clash of the of the Tigers right now as obviously being won by LSU uh, again nice crowd nice atmosphere right here the Chick-fil-a Bowl outstanding atmosphere here from the sports rep right now as you guys can see the play is going on behind me right now we're live from the Chick-fil-a Bowl well coach Les Miles leads the troops out for the LSU Tigers leads them on out of the locker room and he gets them out on the field. Clemson comes out. They're excited about this game. LSU is all excited, amped up. SEC, ACC matchup in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Exciting times. Kickoff comes off. That game, it kicks off. Um, LSU kicks the ball off to Clemson to start the game off. Clemson gets the ball early, has a turnover in the game. Obviously, uh, LSU gets the ball and scores on the first drive of the, uh, of the game, first couple possessions. Exciting times, obviously, for the LSU team. LSU kind of later in the game, as the game went on, it kind of went back and forth. Uh, Taj Boyd obviously had a great chance to in, in this game and did some good things early on in the game. Well, and LSU's defense, their speed was, was obvious at the beginning of the game. They were superior to, to Clemson. Clemson's offense, especially in speed, Barkevi, Samingo, Sam Montgomery, and all those guys. Uh, but in the second half, though, Clemson's hurry up offense gassed the LSU's defense. They couldn't, they, they could barely move and get off the field. They couldn't substitute. And the, the, the key play in this game was Taj Boyd to DeAndre Hopkins, who's going to be a first round draft pick, fourth and 16. If they don't convert it, the game's over. He throws it over All American safety Eric Reed's head. Completes it to DeAndre Hopkins. They go down, kick the winning field goal. Great win for Clemson. Uh, and I, I was just I was super impressed with Taj Boyd in this game and, and his toughness. He took so many shots. Tough loss to, of Sammy Watkins, though. They lose Watkins. Yeah, first yeah, first, first, first play of the game. game yeah. But he's a, a sophomore, so he'll be coming back for another season. Mandatory situation. I got an opportunity, obviously, uh, to, to do a little in-game. I got a little in-game insight that I did. And I also had an opportunity to speak to some Clemson and LSU fans to get their thoughts Here's what they had to say. Here with some LSU fans. I like what you have on. Emily, obviously, how fun is this for you guys to be out here New Year's Eve at, at a great football game and LSU is winning right now? Very fun. 
How fun is it for you out here? Are you enjoying this LSU Tiger win right now? Oh yeah, I can't wait for it, for them to be over and and beat this Clemson and take off and take home the Chick Fil A trophy. Are you gonna Are you gonna be an LSU Tiger one day? Yes. Leland Reagan here, joined by Eric. Obviously, you've got your boys out here enjoying this game. How wonderful is this experience for you guys to come out here on New Year's Eve? Oh, this is a wonderful experience. Just a, uh, just a great place to be, exciting atmosphere. Atlanta hosts great, great, a great time, a great football game, and uh, obviously done by Chick-fil-A. You can't get enough chicken. So me and the boys, we're glad to be here, and uh, we love it. I'm with Todd Finney right now. Todd, obviously a wounded warrior, a foundation obviously raising money. Give us a little insight on that and what it's yeah, all about. What we've done here is we've developed a sports themed fundraiser to get all the sports fans directly involved with helping our wounded warriors. What we're doing is really special. We're trying to employ 1,000 severely wounded warriors across America. We're giving away all our support bands to raise awareness and to raise funds. So if anyone wants to show their support, it's win4woundedwarriors.org. All right, well, there it is. Craig Lawson, Leland Reagan, Sports Wrap TV 38 WRWR. Coming up next, guys, we will uh, uh, have our, we'll do our Inside the Falcons locker room where we'll talk about any and everything of Falcons. Our Falcons are in the playoffs, uh, first round by, and they, uh, but they took a loss, a uh, tough loss as well. Right here on the Sports Wrap TV 38 WRWR. We'll be back. What do Falcons do? Rise up! And welcome back to the Sports Wrap TV 38 WRWR, your middle Georgia sports leader. We want to make sure you guys get into the discussion by giving us a call at 478-345-1500. 345-1500 so you can get in the discussion. You can also follow us on Twitter at Sports Wrap TV 38. That's at Sports Wrap TV 38. And I'm excited about the fact that in 2012, we had an opportunity for over 200 of you viewers and listeners to have an opportunity to come be a part of the Sports Wrap. So thank you for joining, and we want many, many more. Well, it, as we do each and every week when Falcons have a home game, we do a segment called Inside the Falcons Locker Room. We were at the Atlanta Falcons game this past week. Wasn't an exciting game. It was, it was kind of disappointing for me uh, with the Atlanta Falcons having an opportunity to go 14-2 and two this season. Uh, they, they, you were trying to figure out they had nothing really truly supposedly to play for. Uh, and here's one of the things that uh, when I talked to a few of the players in the locker room after, after the game and post and pregame, I had an opportunity to ask some of them about the, the, the importance of the game. But I want you guys to understand one thing. I, I hear a lot of commentators and a lot of people in sports radio talk about games being meaningless to teams like Tampa and teams that are not going to be in the playoffs like the Detroit Lions as well. And one of the things people need to understand and that, I, that I would like to point out is these guys are professionals. This is how they eat, live, breathe, and sleep. If they don't – and when teams are losing, if they, if they obviously go out there and don't play well – Coaches are going to be making changes. So no game, obviously, in the NFL is, um, you know, is, is not important. So we're going to go inside the Falcons locker room. Again, Falcons lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this past week, but it doesn't hurt their playoff standings. They do have a bye week. Here's what a lot of the Falcons players had to say. We're doing a segment we call Inside the Falcons Locker Room. We're here with Atlanta Falcons safety, number 24, Chris Hopes. Uh, listen, it's obviously it's been an interesting season. You guys have got an opportunity to get some reps, get in the game, get in the flow of this game. How does this kind of prepare this team moving into the playoffs, obviously moving forward? You guys have a bye week, so it gives you an opportunity to kind of get healthy. Uh, what are y'all looking forward to, obviously, this week, looking into going into next week? Well, most importantly, we have to get better as a team. You know, uh, to win 13 games, we still haven't played our best football yet. And it's very important that we get on track during the playoffs because there's no tomorrow. So, you know, uh, this, this bye week slash get better week is, is going to be very important for us to come in, get healthy, work on the things that we can do uh, to make us a better football team. Well, I, and I, I want you to tell the people out here because I've been harping on this for the last two or three weeks. Everybody talked about how meaningless this game was for you guys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I keep telling people all the time, y'all are professionals. You guys are playing for y'all. This is how y'all eat. This is how you work. 
understand, give us a, give give them an understanding of this game is very meaningful to you guys. Losing any game is meaningful. Well, Coach Keith Armstrong said earlier uh, last night, excuse me, in our meetings, that uh, this is a career. You know, a career you take it home with you. Right. You know, it, it lasts a lifetime. You know, a profession or a job. You know, you leave it at you leave your your work at at work. But you know, uh, any way you can find momentum in this game, you know. To, to carry over into the next stage, the playoffs, and build off of it. That's what we were looking for, you know. Every time we line on the field, no matter, you know, if it's all first string, you know, is it, if it's subs filling in to play, to give guys rest, you know, we all have to play at a high level and play, play to our professionalism. And we're here live with Dennis and uh, obviously your son. My son Garrett and his friend Justin. All right, you guys obviously came out to enjoy this game today. Fellas, how did y'all enjoy the game today? It was good. Really good. All right, other than the fact that the Falcons didn't win, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Just ready for the playoff run. Well, it, that's, that's the question I want to ask you. How does a game like this prepare the Atlanta Falcons? You possibly lose John Abraham. You see him go down. You see Dante Robinson go down with a neck and head injury. He doesn't return to the game. You see Matt Ryan get hit several times. How does that scare you? Does that scare you at all about what the Falcons could have possibly, injuries that could have possibly happened in this game? Yeah, it scared me a lot. I was really thinking that the starters really wouldn't get much time. So really health was the only thing that I was concerned about today. I told people, uh, obviously, I, and you guys, I said this on the show earlier, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were going to come out here to play. These guys were playing for their jobs in the Buccaneers. On, anytime you're on a losing team, the, the, those teams are playing, those players are playing for their jobs, and they were going to come out and play lights out. Did you see anything in this game that is going to hurt our Atlanta Falcons in their first round, obviously, which will be the divisional rounds of the playoffs? I don't think so beyond health. Assuming um, Abraham and Dr. Robinson come back healthy, you know, I think they'll shake off this loss and be looking prepared for whoever we play in the divisional round. All right, since you brought that up, last question. Who, do, who, who is it that you don't want to see in the first round of the divisional playoffs? Well, since Seattle's put up about 150 points in the last three weeks, I really don't want any part of Seattle here in the playoffs. Obviously, uh, my Pro Bowl safety uh, for this season, I don't care what anybody <laughs> says, thanks, thanks. Uh, obviously, uh, give us a little insight on this game. You know, I, I can't stand when people say a game is meaningless. They talk about this being a meaningless game for you guys and, uh, the, you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You guys didn't play that way today. Yeah, no, we definitely wanted to put our best foot forward going into the second season and you know unfortunately we, we we got away with the L this this week but hey you know now we get to go back to the drawing board make sure we get everything corrected and, and get this momentum going for the second season. Looks like you guys have an opportunity to, to get everybody healthy now with this bye week and everything else how could that help this team obviously moving forward as well to advance further on into the playoffs? Yeah if I think if we can go into the second season with a full clip uh, it, it'll bode really well for us and you know now we have that opportunity to get guys healthy and, and, and get you know some things ironed out and get some things fine-tuned before we step on the field again. All right, best record in the NFL right now, one pro bowler, uh, excuse me, two pro bowlers on this team. Uh, on a defense that has been played lights out this year, your insight, honest insight, if you can't give me on this, about maybe possibly in my eyes, I told you this before, not being, I mean, kind of being left off the pro bowl. I, it's just, you know, it's, you know, the, it's kind of a, 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 a thing of, uh, you know, market. If, you, if your team's not very popular, you know, we've kind of flown under the radar all season. And, it, you know, it kind of, you know, put us in a predicament where we weren't able to send a lot of guys to Hawaii. But, you know, we're playing for something a lot bigger than that. All right, well, there it is. You heard it out of the mouth of TD Thomas Deku, number 28. Super Bowl bound, baby. We're not worried about going to Hawaii. Right here in the Atlanta Falcons locker room. Again with number 25, William Moore, safety for our Atlanta Falcons. Will get an opportunity to get rested, get get yourself healthy and everything. Um, you know, kind of nagging a little injury, man. Get, but I think it, it was it basically just to get you healthy right now so we can get ready for the playoffs. Yeah, I thank all my guys, you know, to put us in a position where we can rest players up. You know, we get that first round by. It's going to be very important going into the game because, uh, you know, it's been a long season, you know. And uh, unfortunately, a couple guys get banged up along the way. That's part of the game. But, uh it's a good opportunity for me to get, you know, the rest of the guys get, get rested up and come back strong. And that was a segment we call Inside the Falcons Locker Room. And we want to make sure you guys keep getting into discussions. Send those Twitter questions. Ask those questions online. We'll get you on air. 478-345-1500. Or you can follow us at Sports Wrap TV 38. That's at Sports Wrap TV 38. And thanks again. Obviously, Falcons have a bye week, so we won't have a game to pick of theirs. But... 
We'll have our NFL picks for the playoffs this weekend and our BCS title game uh, picks with Craig Lawson and Brandon Evans who will be joining me coming up next right here on the Sports Wrap TV 38. We'll be back. And welcome back to the Sports Wrap TV 38 WRWR here on the Ashley Studio set here in the station WRWR TV 38 with the Sports Wrap each and every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Guys, we're going to do a little roundtable discussion, so to speak, on the couch right now. I'm a good friend. Craig Lawson and Brandon Evans, where we're going to talk BCS and NFL, do our NFL and BCS picks. I like it when it's like this, guys. It's a little threesome going on. Yeah, it's cozy. Yeah, I enjoy it. Thanks I'm, for having us here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too, man. Obviously, I love the Duck Dynasty thing you got going on, man. That's really, Thank you. you know, yeah, I saw a bird mm -hmm. uh, nest growing in there anyway a little earlier. <laughs> All right, let's go into this BCS game. Alabama versus Notre Dame. This is an interesting game when you look at the, the, the way um, – Alabama is kind of – this may not have been one of the best Alabama teams, but they come in with 2,000-yard running backs in Lacey and Yeldon. Right, and the way that they're able to run the ball behind that offensive line with the All-Americans they have on the offensive line, A.J. McCarron, he's not necessarily the best quarterback uh, in the nation, but he doesn't make a ton of mistakes. And I really like the fact, you know, the confidence that, in, that Nick Saban instills in this team. Uh, and, you know, I, I like their chances. And then they got, you know, Yeldon's a true freshman and also – uh, Amari Cooper, another true freshman on the outside at wide receiver, is one of the better athletes at wide receiver in the country. Yeah, I don't think the thing about Alabama being better than Notre Dame is about their rushing. I think it's about their quarterback. I think it's McCarron, 26 touchdowns compared to, uh, to Golson's 11. You do talk about thunder and lightning with Lacey and Yeldon. Pretty impressive considering Notre Dame doesn't have a 1,000-yard rusher. But the key to me to this game is going to be the defense because you have the number two scoring defense against the number one scoring defense. When they talk about defense winning championships, it's literally going to happen this year. I think it is as well. But I think you're going to see, uh, you know, Manti Teo, get exposed a little bit in this game with the, the type of linemen that the Alabama Crimson Tide put into place that they have uh, that are going to be going upfield, getting those blocks, getting him on that second level and blocking him and being able to rip off, have these running backs rip off uh, chunks of yardage as well. I think that's going to be a tough game for Notre Dame. Uh, Craig, I need your pick in this game. Give me a score and your pick. I think that Alabama is going to win this game. I think it's going to be closer than people think. I think Alabama or Notre Dame is better than people think. A lot of people want to, you know, discredit Notre Dame. A lot of people hate Notre Dame. Um, Why are you looking at me? I'm just saying, <laughs> a lot of people just, especially in the South here, we don't like Notre Dame, but I think it's going to be closer than people think. I think Alabama's going to win it by a touchdown. I think it's going to be uh, a fairly low scoring game. I'm going to go 21 to 14 Alabama victory. Wow, you know, and I, I tell you, I've been doing very well in my bowl picks. <laughs> so I'm going to flip my bet. I did say Alabama was going to win 24 14. I'm going to flip my bet and say Notre Dame wins because I do think. On the average, it is a down year for the SEC. It is. And it's been six straight bowl champion, or, uh, BCS championships for the SEC. I think this year Notre Dame finally uh, breaks the SEC streak of bowl championships. And I think Notre Dame wins. I think it's a very low-scoring game, something like, uh, you know, 19 to 13. All right. Uh, and the, how about the fact that the SEC this year is only, what, four and three right now? Yeah, not, a great, not a great bowl season. Not a great the bowl season for the SEC. Uh, Texas A&M getting blown uh, not Texas A&M, but uh, Mississippi State getting blown out. Right. Obviously, you have Florida. Uh, didn't Florida, look good. Florida didn't look good at Florida all. Florida looked, looked like awful. They didn't wanna, looked like they didn't want to play in the Sugar Bowl. And there's right. another thing. How about the fact now? How, can you guys imagine how Georgia would have played in that in that Sugar Bowl? Don't you think they would have been a much better game? Yeah, if Georgia had played in that Sugar Bowl instead of Florida. I think so. And you know, Florida's offensive line really didn't show up to play. Driscoll looked really bad, and then Florida's defense, which is what they've been known for this year, just really, you know, Louisville was able to drive down and at least get in field goal range on almost every possession that they had. I think the the the, the thing about that Florida game though was that Charlie Strong was the former coach of that team. He knew the ins and outs. You know, he knew the ins and outs of that team. I think that was just, you know, uh, the advantage going to Charlie Strong there. And Louisville had a lot more to prove. So I'm picking Alabama to win the game 24-14. Uh, I think Alabama, uh, it's going to be hard to stop Thunder and Lightning and Yeldon and Lacey. I think it's going to be a tough game. And I think we'll see Nick Saban 
leave for the NFL. Nah. I, think, I think we'll see that happen. I mean, I know he's got 100 million reasons to do it, but yeah. I don't think he I, will. He's I, got a statue outside his stadium. It doesn't matter, man. That statue is not going anywhere. He's not Joe Paterno. And neither is Saban. Right. I, I'm telling you right now, I honestly believe you'll see him in the Cleveland and Browns. And it's hard. To, like, I'm kind of in the middle of this because I like – Literally. $100 million, ten, yeah, literally. <laughs> ten, 10 years, $100 million, if that's even true. We haven't confirmed that for sure. Uh, but if, after you've won, if you win this national championship, what more do you have to prove on the college level? Yeah, you've you know? won several at Alabama. You've, you've got to beat Bear Bryant. Yeah. You're still not the best coach at Alabama yet. So he true. wants to be the best coach in Alabama and the best college coach ever. First of all, he's got to beat Bear Bryant's records at Alabama. That's what he still has to prove. Well, I'll tell you what, what, what is a little bit telling to me is Nick Saban is kind of – he kind of played it off like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, he's that, not interviewing for jobs. But he yeah. didn't say, I'm definitely not going to the NFL. You know, he never yeah. said it's not happening. He just said he thought, he thought it was silly. He kind of played it off and avoided it completely. So it, I, think it, I think it's probably on his mind, but, I mean, I don't know. I, who knows what he's thinking. Yeah. But he's we probably don't, thinking about Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, he's, yeah he's definitely thinking about, about Notre Dame, Dame. getting another ring. We know Chip Kelly is going to be interviewed as well right after their big game, their Fiesta Bowl game as well. So uh, we know he's going to get a few uh, interviews with that. All right, to the NFL and one of the best linebackers in the history of the game, Ray Lewis, 17 years with one team, the Baltimore Ravens. He's retiring. And um, I, thoughts real quick, guys. What do y'all think uh, his place in the history as middle linebackers, where he stands, Craig? I, uh, you know, I hate to see him go, but I, I, I really think he's, he's a top five middle linebacker of all time. We were talking, we were listing off some guys uh, like Mike Lambert and, and Mike Singletary and all those guys, but I really think he's up there in that echelon. I, I don't, I don't, I didn't really watch Singletary and Lambert. That was a little bit before my time, so I don't really want to place him, uh, you know, like on, on a, with a number rank. But I definitely think he's in that top category, and he was a, he's a leader of men. You know, people followed Ray Lewis from day one in Baltimore. He has been a leader on that team. Yeah, I think the thing about Ray Lewis is that he had the same tenacity and he scared people the way that Jack Lambert yeah. did. People were afraid of Ray Lewis. I wouldn't want to meet Ray Lewis in a dark alley. And I just think that he brought that intensity, that fear into the game, really just defined the linebacker position. Probably him and Erlocker over the last 10 years have defined the linebacker position in the NFL. I don't know if I would put him above Singletary. I'd put him above Lambert probably just because of just his physical attributes. Lambert wasn't as big, different, wasn't as I mean, fast. Different, different era. But yeah. Singletary, and Butkus, size. Singletary and Butkus, I, I still would put above them. But I think Ray Lewis just in, in our generation has just been the best player in the NFL on defense. Here's my thing. I don't think uh, Mike Singletary could have handled the 330-pound offensive lineman coming out and hit and handling him at, his, at that in that small stature that he had. I think he would have done a good job of it. He's, he was intense. Uh, we've seen what London Fletcher's been able to do, uh, and, and London Fletcher, obviously being an undersized 5'9", Zach Thomas was able to do it at Miami for a yeah. long time in Dallas. But Ray Lewis, in my eyes, 17 years at the middle linebacker spot. Uh, only time he ever missed games was when he. Uh, obviously had this injury, the, the tricep injury this year, 17 years. Only player in NFL history with 40 sacks and 30 interceptions. Only player. No one else even has 25 sacks and 30 interceptions. No one. Right. So it's exciting. Uh, I, I think Ray is number one on my list uh, as far as the middle linebackers go. Uh, Brian Erlocker could never stay healthy. That was the one thing. You know, he missed minimum of four games every year. Right. And that's something you couldn't depend on him. Ray Lewis put fear in guys, and he also motivated guys. That's what I liked about Ray Lewis. All right, let's get to our NFL picks. We've got a few wild card games coming up. Uh, um, you know, Brandon, you're going to be needing to play catch up a little bit this <laughs> I week. I think I'm mathematically eliminated from beating you in our picks this year. Although we were pretty close again last week. Pretty close, but I still came out on top because you picked Tampa. I pick, oh, you picked uh, oh, yeah. Atlanta, and I picked Tampa. So, again, <laughs> that's what I get for picking with my and heart. And I picked Minnesota to beat Green Bay. Uh, to make it to the playoffs, and I think you picked Green Bay in that game too. So we weren't that. We weren't you also to, picked San Francisco, you, and you also picked, I think, Houston. So you know, you missed a few too, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, but I still came out on top. I like being on top. Anyway, all right, guys. Uh, Saturday's games. We had a couple games Saturday starting at 4:30 p.m. Cincinnati Bengals will travel to the Houston Texans, who have lost what three games in a row now. Yeah. Not They're really reeling good. going in in this brand. Go ahead. Oh, wow. Do I, do I have to go first? Yes. You know, I've been picking the Bengals a lot this year because I, I really think they have a lot of talent. I think that they have, uh, you know, Geno Atkins out of Georgia, one of the best defensive linemen Bobo. in the league, came out of nowhere. They got one of the best receivers in the league, A.J. Green, also out of Georgia. Maybe I'm a little biased. Uh, but I don't think Andy Dalton and A.J. Green and the Bengals can go in 
to Houston and beat the Texans in Houston. I think Houston does win at home because it is such a tough place to play and a lot riding on this game for the Texans. I'm going to take the Texans. I don't like the way Matt Schaub is playing right now. They're not able to run the ball uh, all that consistently with Arian Foster, who's been one of the best running backs in the league this year. Uh, defensively, J.J. White, I think, will probably be the best player on the field. He'll probably be the defensive player of the year in the NFL. But I'll, like you said, you know, and on top of having guys like Atkins and, and uh, Green, they also have guys like Carlos Dunlap on defense side of Florida. I mean, they, they've got guys that can get to the quarterback. And I like the way this Bengals team is playing. And I think, you know, with Andy Dalton, he's going to get the ball to A.J. Green. And, I, you know, I think the offense is going to be able to move the ball against this defense. And I like the Bengals' chances, even though they're on the road. All right. uh, well, I'm going Cincinnati Bengals in this game. I think the Bengals are, have more momentum and more talent right now. When you go through the, the AFC North, when you go through Baltimore and Pittsburgh and Cleveland and you can go out there and, and you can win and do the things that they've done, I think that's part of why I'm going with Cincinnati. And also, I just again, like what you said, you've got a nice contingency of Georgia players uh, in Pro Bowlers, uh, A.J. Green and Geno Atkins. Oh, All right. Uh, yep, and then mm -hmm. Gathers as well being on that yeah. team also. All right. 8 p.m. game. Uh, Minnesota Vikings will play the Green Bay Packers for the third time this season in Green Bay for the second time in two weeks. Um, I, this is going to be a really tough game for Minnesota to win just because I think the embarrassment that Green Bay has that Adrian Peterson has put up 412 yards and four touchdowns, I think, yep. against them in two games this season. And it's so hard to beat any team three times in a season. I'm going with the Minnesota Vikings in this game. I mean, excuse me, the Green Bay Packers in this game. Hmm. Yeah, well, the thing about Minnesota is ponder. Christian Ponder, what are you going to get? The first time he played the Packers, he's hurt. he had, I think, the lowest quarterback rating of the season. The second time they played the Packers, he had the highest quarterback rating of the season. So which Christian Ponder is going to show up in this game? We know who's going to show up, number 28. Adrian Peterson's going to show up. He's going to get his, I think, eight yards, nine yards short or something of, of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say Green Bay. Uh, we're going to go three for three here. I think Green Bay is going to win too. I don't, I don't think that... Minnesota is going to be able to go into Green Bay, beat them two weeks in a row. It's really hard to do. Uh, and I think, you know, Christian Ponder, he should, by, by all rights, have the best play-action pass game in the NFL with Adrian Peterson. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, sometimes it works out, but I think overall Green Bay is going to be ready for Minnesota, and I think they're going to win at home. All right, we've got on Saturday games, two for Cincinnati, one for Houston, and all three of us for the, Minnes for the Green Bay Packers. Excuse me. Now on Sunday, uh, starting at 1 p.m., the Indianapolis Colts, the Chuck Strong, Chuck Pagano, uh, Andrew Luck rookie quarterback goes in and faces the Baltimore Ravens who find out that their leader and their mentor and their, their, their uh, motivational leader, so to speak, and Ray Lewis is returning and possibly his last game in front of the Baltimore Ravens fans. They're going to show their butts, guys, and I think Baltimore – hands Indianapolis a, a, a resounding loss in this game. I think this is going to be a hard loss for the Indianapolis Colts, Craig. Yeah, yeah, Craig, you go first. Okay, well, I'll go ahead. I, 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 think, I think Baltimore's going to win this game. Even though they, ha they haven't looked as good toward the end of the season, uh, but I, I think Indianapolis, they're going to be riding uh, a high, you know, with Chuck Pagano and, you know, we saw the dance in the locker room and the way Andrew Luck's playing. And I've been so impressed with Luck as a rookie. Uh, this year and the way that he's been able to play and turn the program around in Indianapolis. But I do think Ravens are going to win this game. I don't think it's going to be a resounding victory like Leland does, but I, th I do think it'll, it'll be a victory that'll come down to, you know, fourth quarter, maybe a touchdown or field goal or so, but I think, I think Baltimore wins. Unfortunately, affirmation across the board, guys. I, uh -huh. I'm agreeing with you. I think that they're going to play inspired football, and that's really going to do it, at least for one game in the NFL, especially in the playoffs. I think Baltimore is going to win. I think they're going to win but maybe a touchdown. All right, best game, I think, of the weekend. Pitch two rookie quarterbacks against each other. Russell Wilson will travel from the left coast to the east coast and face rookie quarterback, second pick overall in the draft in uh, RG3 and the Washington Redskins. This is going to be one of the best games, I believe, because you've got two teams, two guys that are vying for rookie of the year, two uh, defenses that seem to be playing inspired right now. And I actually think... The Seattle Seahawks go on the road, which is something hard to do coming from the left coast, from the west coast to the east coast. I think Seattle comes in with Russell Wilson and wins this game because they've got Marshawn Lynch at running back. I, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I agree. You know, I, I think that Washington. I, first of all, Robert Griffin III isn't able to run the ball the way that he has been earlier since since this knee injury. He's he hasn't been as mobile. 
Alfred Morris has looked great on the ground, but I think Marshawn Lynch, the combination of Marshawn, the way that Russell Wilson's been playing, and the defense of Seattle, I think, is, is the key here. I think Seattle's defense is the best defense in the NFL, and I think they're going to carry Seattle to, to the victory on the road. Even though they haven't been great on the road this year, I think they'll win. I think Seattle is definitely the better team, but they're not going to win. It's too far to go across. I think the place is going to be rocking. When was the last time they had a playoff game in Washington, D.C.? I mean, think about it. The Redskins are going to be fired up for this game. And it's going to be close. I do agree with you guys. I think Le uh, you know, Leland was right. It's going to be the best game of the weekend probably. I think the Redskins win. I'm taking all the home teams. <laughs> taking all the home teams. All right, so you're going with the Redskins. Guys, that's, uh, that's it for our picks right now. We gave you our BCS picks and our NFL picks. You guys want to give us your picks and find out what's – and obviously see if you can beat us. Go to at SportsRap TV 38 so you, to uh, give your picks, or you can give us a call, 478-345-1500. You guys have a great, wonderful weekend. We'll see you. Enjoy some football. We'll see you guys next week right here from 9 to 10 a.m. on the SportsRap TV 38. We're out of here. <laughs>